Welcome everybody! Today I'd like to tell you the story of how I finally got my own Shaper Origin. It all started about a year ago when I came across a certain YouTube video. It was one of those things you need in your life slash lifehack videos. You know, the ones that go like... That particular video was about woodworking and it featured the Shaper Origin. I found the tool very interesting, but after a quick search, unfortunately, I realized that I couldn't afford it. But in the following weeks, I couldn't pull myself away from the idea that I could one day own my very own Shaper Origin. At the beginning of 2020, Shaper Tools started selling their tools in Europe as well. So I wrote them an email asking if maybe it was possible to borrow one of their machines for a few weeks to work on my project. The support team was super nice, but unfortunately they said borrowing a machine was not possible. But I still wasn't ready to just give up on the idea. So I started looking for ways to earn some money. A few months later, I heard that my university was looking for someone with electrical and software engineering skills to build a corona prevention system. Long story short, I got in contact with the responsible people and after that put a lot of time into developing that system. As we speak, I'm testing a few of these systems on the entire campus. And that successful project earned me enough money to finally, finally be able to afford my own Shaper Origin machine. So what is a Shaper Origin and what can it do? The Shaper Origin is basically a handheld CNC machine, but in the form factor of a router. It uses a camera to track domino-style optical markers to orient itself on the workpiece. You can import the 2D models that you would like to cut, and on the machine's display, you can see an interactive overlay of your shapes on the surface of your scanned workpiece. You then simply move the machine in the direction suggested in the display, and the spindle will compensate for any jitter that you introduce while cutting. Thanks to this clever design, you can cut precise shapes even out of large surfaces with a machine that is portable and fits into a small box. I'd like to point out that I'm not sponsored by Shaper for this video in any way. I'm just absolutely blown away by the engineering and the software and the clear UI design of the machine and I think that its unique features are going to enable me to make a few really cool and unique projects although I do not have the space for a full-size CNC machine or other expensive and large woodworking tools. Okay, now you know what the Shaper Origin is and how it got here. So let's dive right in and build something cool with it. Today we're shooting a more or less live video, so you're going to be right in the action of what I'm building today. And that is a paper towel holder. So basically uh, right over here you can see uh, there's this paper towel and I botched this uh, weird thing a few years ago, but it's really clanky and yeah, I'm gonna try to improve that today. And basically what I have planned is I want to uh, CNC machine a few of these wooden parts. This is going to uh, go together just by like pressing it together. I don't want to glue it, I don't want to screw it. Uh, I just want to stick it together. And of course you can take the, the middle part out to exchange the uh, paper roll. Material wise, I bought this wooden stick. This is 28 millimeter in diameter. And somewhere behind you, I have this 10 millimeter plywood. All right, so we're starting out with the large flat parts. And the first thing I'm going to do is mark out my plywood with the shaper tape, which the mill uses to position itself and to detect where I'm going to cut later on. Okay, so now I'm gonna upload the data that I generated with my CAD software onto the machine so that we can cut them out. A few moments later. I'm gonna start scanning now and basically what the machine does is it takes a lot of individual images of the workspace and then stitches them together kind of like when you move your smartphone to make a panoramic 
photograph. And then we have a map of the entire material and although I'll be cutting stuff out later on, we'll always have that perfect uh, picture of how our surface looks so that we can position everything correctly and uh, cut exactly on the line and it'll be great. In total, we have six parts to manufacture. We have these two side panels, which uh, will only mill like from the top, so they're uh, plainly 2D parts. Then we have these two spacers back here. They will have these uh, slots um, to put everything together later on, so they'll be a bit more complex as we have to mill them from the top first and then cut on the small side again. And then we have this board, same principle applies. It also has this, this side pin here that will uh, form a hinge later on and the wooden rod, which kind of has this step offset. For the first few cuts, I'm going to be using this six millimeter mill because I just want to go fast. And later on for the more intricate details, I will be using a three millimeter cutter. I'm trying to place the parts as close as possible to each other so that the a uh, bit fits between all of the parts, but also, of course, I'm trying to save materials, so this is kind of... Uh, millimeter alignment. This is looking good, and already you can see how the origin kind of augments reality by placing parts where actually there isn't any drawing or line, so you can basically perfectly check where is my where are my parts going to spring out of the board. Okay, so we've placed all the parts, so basically we can give it a go. Later. Okay, minor change of plans. I want to put this logo in one of the parts and it has a lot of very pointy lines and uh, small details. So I'm going to cut that first using a 60 degree V-cut cutter and I guess we can get a lot more detail out of that logo using that. And after that, we'll switch back to the six millimeter bit and cut out all the outlines. Great. Okay, so for these cutouts, I want to work as quickly as possible, but I also want them to look good in the end. So I'm going to do a few uh, pretty brutal passes where I take away three, four millimeters of material. So I'm going to mill at an offset from my actual edge. So I'm gonna offset the cutting line by like uh, 0.4 millimeters or so. And then on the last pass, when there's only one or two millimeters of material left, I'm going to go all the way out and take the offset away and then we get a really clean edge and also have the speed of the first few quick passes. Okay, so here we have some of the larger parts already cut out and now I've switched to a three millimeter cutter bit to do the zigzag lines on the uh, paper towel rippy thingy and the rounded corners here I designed them with a three millimeter radius so I'm going to be using the smaller bit to cut those out and then we'll hopefully get them really detailed. Thank you. 
Yeah, the, the quality of the spikes is really cool. And uh, let's try it out with the actual paper roll and see if it actually works. So, let's see. Yeah, I'd say that's absolutely okay. Cool. Now it's time to manufacture the uh, joints and pins on the sides of the parts. So I'm going to use a jig so that I can uh, kind of mount everything upright and then mill directly into these uh, corners. And yeah, on these pieces as well, they're going to uh, get like an, an offset so that we can stick them directly into this slot. Yeah, and if we are careful, then uh, that should work without gluing or screwing at all, so... And now it's time to saw off the wooden rod. And I know this is the wrong saw, but the next best thing we have is this one. No. Oh yeah, Mini. And it's perfect. <laughs> okay, great. So now it's time to set up the workstation, which I've got neatly packed in here. Parts, parts, parts. Okay, so there's a lot of different parts to this rig, the Shaper workstation, and they enabled me to mount uh, a lot of different parts in weird angles and alignments. And the thing I'm going to start with right now are the spacers for our project. So I'm going to try to mount these so that they're flush with the top, and then I can mill directly into the the small side of the part. So I'm going to have to find a way to align them properly so that I can set up the Shaper Origin for one part and then just flip it around and do the other part with the same kind of setup so that I don't have to repeatedly uh, screw everything around. I'm going to rescan on the workstation. I've done this before, but of course uh, this part wasn't there the last time and I want to have this in my scan so that later I can align the uh, model correctly on the surface of this piece of wood. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, let's see if that worked. So over here, you can see the, the new end joint of this piece of wood. It's, it's quite beautiful. And yeah, let's check if it fits. Ah, that's beautiful. That's really cool. It just slides in, but it still has a lot of pressure and it's, it's kind of stable already. I really like that. Great, this is the very last cut I'm going to make, probably. Um, it's the end of the wooden rod and I'm just taking out uh, a bit of the outer diameter that will go through the paper roll later on and enable me to hook it into the rest of the holder. So let's see how that goes. It's time to test if the wooden rod even fits the roll. Wow, that's amazing. So the rest uh, is now milled, sanded. We're gonna put it together and then see if it works. Okay, so we have kind of a bright side of the wood and one with a bit more structure. 
I guess I'll put the one with the structure on the outside. Yeah, it's still a really great fit. Just press it together. That's enough. So first, then this one. Yeah. Alright. Now comes the tricky part. Wow, that's that's great, and the hinge is working as well. That's yeah. Wow. Okay, let's put it together. Let's see if it works. Yeah, that's. Really, I'm, I'm amazed. It has a really good fit. It, it looks great. Nevertheless, I think I'm gonna give it a spray of color or kind of color the logo individually. But other than that, uh, it's, yeah, it's a really nice small paper holder and it works on the tabletop as well as on a French cleat. So we can hang it from the wall uh, when we have cleats installed. Yeah, that was that was real fun and I hope I could uh, kind of introduce you to how I'm using the Shaper Origin and the workstation to to make things like this and we're going to have a lot of cool projects like this one in the future so if you're interested in that stay tuned. And with that, see you next time.